points. We wait for confirmation on the Dodemos score. First arrow. It is just up from there. The little sign that we have looking at it. It is a shot by Sophie de from our vantage point. It is impossible to tell if it's a nine or a ten. But I'm not too proud to let the judge overrule me on this. Ladies and gentlemen, that are talking to the judge will have to conduct operations. Bettina Katzmüller will be inspecting that particular arrow and ascertain the value in a matter of moments. Bettina Katzmüller looks very closely at us, but we can see from our side we cannot see the first ball. Again, it's a little bit different. Bettina Katzmüller is the arrow's concept here. This is not the worst agent to have. Es ist keine 10 gewesen, es ist die 9 und deshalb hat jetzt die Mexikaner mit der Nummer 1 3 Länge mehr, 59 zu 56. Well, we look back on that 8 from Bodemort, she, uh, she didn't seem too surprised by it, no, which is surprising to me because I didn't see any like, real shakes or something that was really wrong with that shot, but um, she must have known that that went to the, to the left because she was almost already shaking her head when the arrow was still in flight. Well, confirmation that Dodemon did have that uh, first arrow marked as a nine. So a three-point gap as we go into the third end. So still a little bit on the right-ish. Um, it's it's one of those moments where um, you're shooting a good group, you're shooting a lot of tens, so you don't want to adjust your side too much. But I would say if you are shooting a group and it's not in the middle, always just adjust your side that tiny bit. Because if you uh, shoot a little bit further to the right now, you're in the nine. Whereas if you have your side centered, you might still catch the ten ring. It's been a bit of a feature of these World Championships that if you get out to an early start, you tend to hold on to it and win the match. Yeah, I think it's uh, something to do with the circumstances on the venue. Um, I feel like the circumstances are not as easy as they seem. Um, but also, if you're ahead uh, early, if you get an early head start, it's an easier place to be in mentally because you don't have to fight back into the match, you can just continue with what you're doing. So a different mental approach there. It's certainly proving to be the case here. Patera getting back to back perfect and uh, has a commanding lead with two ends left to go. You picked it right from the start, Patera, and she is. Uh, well, so I'm not going to say she's going to win for sure, but she's in the best position. Yeah, she is leading by five points with uh, two ends to go. So five points and six arrows would mean that if Sophie Dornemont still wants to win this outright, um, uh, Becerra has to at least uh, shoot a nine every arrow or yeah, well, miss six points. And then Sophie Dornemont will have to shoot a perfect score to catch up. So it's a... Uh, it's not really a favorable position to be in for Sophie. Made the Elite Eight, though. Archery has no age boundaries, clearly. No, not at all. Um, there's actually an example of um, uh, an archer in the US who is over 100 years old and still shooting his bow. Uh, and he is a, a war veteran, actually. So, uh, the, yeah, the, there really is no age uh, limit when it comes to archery. He's not here. Right? He's, he's not here. I don't think he quite made the team, but he's still enjoying himself uh, very much. A hundred years old. Amazing. Dodemont has a mountain 
to climb here in Berlin, training by five. I think the biggest difference here between uh, Sophie Dodemont and uh, Andrea Becerra is just how solid they are in um, their aiming. You can see that Andrea is, is barely moving when she is uh, aiming, and if she moves, it's like slow moving. Whereas if you look at Sophie, and we get a nice little close up here, you can see that bow arm is just moving a little bit more. There's a little bit more shaking. Um, and in compound archery, it's all about like small margins, right? So you don't want to move too much. Um, and although aiming is a movement, you, you're never 100% still in the middle. Um, you want to limit those movements and, and at least have them move as slowly and as quietly as possible. That's the ninth 10 in a row for Andrea Becerra. And a solid end of 29 there for uh, Sophie Dodemont, but it's just Andrea is just shooting really, really well. Nine, nine. Well, the nine breaks up that uh, run of nine tens, but it's an incredibly commanding position for Bethera to be in. A good marker to put down in the first quarter final as well for the rest of the athletes coming out for the other three quarter finals. For sure, yeah, and uh, looking at the flags now, it seems like it's pretty win still, so it's uh, some nice circumstances to shoot some high scores, and I think uh, Andrea is sho showing us that it's possible. Um, I think this is also uh, what we're going to see more of in the, the rest of the Elite Eight matches. So we have two sessions of uh, compound individual archery today. The women feature this morning. The men come a little bit later on this afternoon. And uh, we'll be crowning the world champions at the end of each session. We're going to have a couple of heavy, heavy hitters uh, later on uh, in this session as well. So I think what Andrea is showing us now is that if you want to get to the final four, you'll need to come out of the gates fast and you need to keep shooting really high scores if you want to... Uh, have any success at these World Championships. Start of the fifth. Dodemont putting down a 10, but he was trading by five and still is. A little bit of redemption here for uh, Sophie Dodemont. Um, I don't think it's going to make a difference for this match unless uh, something goes wrong in Becerra's last end. Yeah, don't no, have the look of someone who knows this one has gone. And that's also, it's the beautiful part of a compound archery, but also the frustrating part of the cumulative system where if you don't get out of the gates as fast as your opponent you have to play catch up the whole match ten, ten, ten. great score. finish though from Dodemont a perfect 30 for her and a smile on her face but uh, Bethera is in control needs to stay focused Nine. Nine. Has with a 28 oh, has a place in the semi-finals of the women's individual compound here at the World Championships, and you have to say, looking very good. 
looking very good indeed, and I think um, it's speculation, obviously, because uh, you never know, but it, it looks like if she had a little bit more pressure on her shoulders those last two ends, she would have maybe shot a couple more tents because it, feel, it felt to me like she was kind of letting go a little and therefore shooting a bit more nines. So uh, this is going to be uh, interesting to see in, uh, in the final four for Andrea Becerra. So Becerra through to the semi-finals of the compound women's individual. Sophie Dodemont made the Elite Eight. 30 years after her first what world championship appearance in a different discipline as well. Thank you so much. Let's she waves goodbye to the crowd.